the number one skill for CCNA? Calculating those four numbers based on an IP address and a mask. I'm going to teach you how to do it right now. Let's get into it. So the context. In the two book set, this content matches volume one, part four, chapter 14. It's chapter 14 in the old edition one and the new edition two as shown there. And that chapter has three sections and this video matches the third major section called analyzing existing subnets, decimal. So in this video, I'm gonna start by basically showing you the process, how to find four key subnet facts using only decimal math with no binary. And if you practice the process using only decimal math, then you'll be able to go fast enough for the exam. Then I'll show you three examples and point you at more practice because you will need to practice. All right, as always, I make promises to help you with exam prep. Stick till the end of the video and I'll tell you what in the chapter you need to look at in that section. For everyone, whether you have the book or not, I'll point you at some review activities, in particular a review video this time around. And what's the extra this time? I'll talk about just how fast you need to go with this process to be ready for the exam. The process I'm about to show you keys on each octet of the dotted decimal mask. And here's a list of all the dotted decimal masks that you might bump into for CCNA. It starts at the top of each list with all the easy cases, three easy cases. And those are the masks for which there's all 255s and zeros in the mask. And it turns out the process is very simple in those cases. The rest of these masks have at least one octet where there's a value that's neither a zero nor a 255, right? One octet in particular. And I'll refer to that octet as the interesting octet or the difficult octet because it requires some extra thinking and some extra scaffolding around our process, all right? Now, you may not realize this looking at these lists of dotted decimal masks at the top of the page, but if we look at the prefix style masks, it's a reminder that, hey, each of these masks in dotted decimal, if I go down the list, each one just has one more binary one in it versus the previous one. So there you go. You might remember this reference table. This is a table you'll definitely want to have memorized for this process as well. Every dotted decimal mask has four octets. Those values can only be one of these nine numbers. And the reason is in binary, the matching binary number in eight bits follows the convention of not interleaving ones and zeros. If there are ones, they're on the left. And if there are zeros, they're on the right. So here's the process and I'm not even gonna read it to you. I'm gonna show it to you repeatedly with three examples coming up, but let me point out a few things. Steps one, two, three, and five deal with the easy octets. That's either three or four octets, depending on the mask. The difficult or interesting octet, that's handled here in step four with these three sub-steps, if you will. So we'll spend a lot of time here, but we still have to get through the other simpler steps, one, two, three, and five. All right, let's go through a few examples of using this process. So let's start with an example. And in this example, we've got this IP address and this mask. And step one is all about setting up the problem, literally organizing the problem in a, in a way that'll be easy to follow the process. So it begins with a dotted decimal mask first and the IP address second, and that's important and it begins with column alignment because we're gonna work column by column by column, octet by octet, and space to write four dotted decimal numbers down here. We're gonna start by figuring out the subnet ID and subnet broadcast address, but we're later gonna write down the first and last usable addresses in here. So step one, set up your problem area like that, and you can draw these lines in or not. They're just in the slide to emphasize we've got nice column alignment so you can do the problem well. Next up, step two, we're gonna go octet by octet and key off the value in the mask. And at step two, the question is, if the mask is 255, we do some things. So if we look at this mask, 255, 285, 255, zero, we've got three octets that are 255. So we're gonna do the same action in these three octets. What is the action? Copy the address octets to the subnet ID, copy the address octets to the broadcast address. 
Yeah, it's that simple. So 172, 22, 65, is, those are the addresses, octets in those in this case. So we copy them down here, we copy them down here. Yeah, copy, easy enough, right? Step three is similar, but a little different. The question is, do we have any octets for which the mask value is zero? And we do. The fourth octet, the mask is zero. But in this case, instead of copying, you write a zero in the subnet ID and a 255 in the subnet broadcast address. So we write a zero here in the subnet ID, a 255 in the broadcast address, and hey, looks like we're done. All four octets are complete. Now, there is a step four and five. Step four, as it turns out, that would be for the interesting octet. If there was a mask value that was neither a zero nor a 255, but we don't have one of those in this case, and we've already figured out the subnet ID, and so there's nothing to do at step four. So we'll ignore four A, B, and C for right now. At least we don't need to worry about it for this problem. Moving on to step five, it will tell us the first and last usable address. And that process is the same every time, whether it was a difficult or easy case. And here's the deal. To find the range of addresses, you in the fourth octet, so step five, it's always in the fourth octet, take the subnet ID and add one, add one only in the fourth octet. And we take the broadcast address and subtract one in the fourth octet to get the last usable address. So down at the bottom, we take the subnet ID, we take the fourth octet of zero, add one, and there's our first usable address. And then to get the last usable address, we take the subnet broadcast address and subtract one to get 254. Example one didn't show the interesting or difficult octet, so let's do an example two that does. Here in example two, we have this IP address and we have this dotted decimal mask, and notice the third octet of the mask is 240. So that's that case that's neither a zero nor a 255 that will make us use those extra things in step four. All right, so when we get there, that'll be new. But steps one, two, three, and five are exactly the same. So we set up the problem space. We write the dotted decimal mask followed by the address. We leave space for four numbers, and we make sure we've got column alignment just to make doing the math problem easier to see. All right? Once we're there, we go octet by octet for any mask octets that are 255. Well, we've got two of those this time, right? We copy the address to the subnet ID and to the broadcast address. We've got two octets where the mask is 255. So we copy 172.23, 172.23 below. Then at step three, we say if the mask is zero, well, we've got one octet only where the mask is zero. So in that octet, we write a zero or a 255, a zero in the subnet ID and a 255 in the subnet broadcast address. So we write this zero for the subnet ID and this 255 for the subnet broadcast address. Now, in example one, we were finished with the subnet ID and subnet broadcast address at this point. But here we've got an octet that we don't know the value for yet in both numbers, right? Because, hey, we've got this mask value that was neither a 255 nor a zero. So let's get into that. So step four, repeating the steps from the big long list, says if the mask is neither, we're gonna do something called calculating a magic number. And then for the subnet ID, we're gonna find a multiple of the magic number. And then for the broadcast address, we're gonna use the next multiple of the magic number. Yeah, so let's walk through it. In fact, it's the most complex. It's not complex as in difficult, really. It's just more things to think about. So here's the logic, step 4a. We calculate a magic number as 256 minus the mask's value in this interesting octet. So the mask's value is 240 in this interesting octet. 256 minus 240 is 16. That's what I call the magic number. Nothing magic about it, it's just a useful thing to calculate to find the answer. It turns out the subnet ID will be some multiple of this calculated magic number. Which multiple is the only question then? That's what we do at 4b, is figure out which multiple. So 
if I just write down all the multiples of 16, starting at 0, the answer could be 0. So 0, 16, 32, and all the way up through all the valid range of values that can go in an IP address. So we go all the way up through 240 in this case. And we look at those, and we've got this orange highlight on 32. You could probably guess that that's the one we're going to pick already, right? But why? We want to pick the nearest magic multiple that's not greater than the address. So the address's value is 41. So think of it this way. The address is a number in the subnet, and the subnet ID is a number that's a little lower than the address. So we want to pick a number that's not bigger than the address. That doesn't make sense from what we know about how subnets work. The subnet ID is the lowest number in the range. So we want the nearest magic multiple that's close to the address's value, just not bigger than the address's value. Well, 32 is close and 48 is close, but 32 is close and not bigger than, and 48 is bigger than. That's why we picked 32. So now we've got the subnet ID. Now you can tell that the first time of telling you this bit of logic took a minute or two. So that's not fast. Practice this 5, 10, 15, 20 times, and then it'll be automatic. The math clearly is not difficult. It's just getting good enough at the process so it becomes second nature. All right, finding the subnet ID, we picked 32 at the previous step. You pick the next multiple, which is 48, and always subtract one from it. And that's what you plug in the broadcast address value in that octet. Next magic multiple minus one. That's the logic at step C. And now we've got the subnet ID and subnet broadcast address. Armed with those two values, we can repeat step five, which is easy. Take the subnet ID, add one in the fourth octet to get 172.23.32.1 and take the subnet broadcast address, and in the fourth octet, subtract one, fourth octet only, to get 172.23.47.254. That's why it's important that you, you subtract from the subnet broadcast address. You wanna pick up all of the broadcast address except one less in that fourth octet. So let's do one more, and I'll show you a few other variations here. In this case, we're going to have this mask of 285, 285, 285.192. So it does have one interesting octet, the fourth octet this time. And no mask values of zero, so that's going to be a little different. And it's got this IP address, all right? So step one, we set up the problem. Nice column alignment. Space for four numbers down below. We write the dotted decimal mask at the top to make our process easier because we're keying on the octet values in the mask. Then at step two is before, if the mask is 255, we do stuff. We've got three octets of 255 this time. So we copy 10, 140, 130 to the subnet ID, 10, 140, 130, and to the broadcast address, 10, 140, 130. Oh, we're almost done. Then you get to step three. It says if the mask is zero, well, hey, none of the octets in the mask are zero. So that's a do nothing. So nothing here. But we still have this octet where we've got a neither 0 nor 255 value. So now we've got to go through these extra detailed steps. And that's what you mostly need to practice to get good at this. So what are we practicing here? Well, we calculate the magic number as 256 minus the mask's value. Let's get into that. 256 minus the mask's value of 192 in that interesting octet gives us 64. So we know the subnet ID then is going to be a multiple of 64 possibly zero. So what are those multiples? Zero, 64, 128, 192, and I wrote down 256 just to make the point that it's out of range. It's not a valid number in a dotted decimal number, so you could never use 256. So it, here are the four multiples of 64 that are candidates at least. Which one do we want? We want the nearest magic multiple that's not greater than the address, the address's value is 120 in this case. So 64 and 128 are closest. 128 is obviously the very closest, but it's greater than. So we pick the one that's close, but not greater than, which is 64. 
and now we've completed the subnet ID. Then for the subnet broadcast address, we pick the next multiple of the magic number, which is 128, subtract one from it, and that's our value in the subnet broadcast address. Finally, to find the usable addresses, you simply take the subnet ID's fourth octet and add one to get 65, and take the subnet broadcast address's fourth octet, which is 127, subtract one to get 126. As always, I promised some extras at the beginning if you stick around to the end. So here we're talking about chapter 14 in volume one, and it's the third section in that chapter, and it's called Analyzing Existing Subnets in Decimal, with that decimal process. And I've told you how hugely important this topic is, so use the entire section. Read it all. It's a huge topic for CCNA. Use the examples as practice. Also, circle back to section two, which talks about the binary equivalent process because it can give you some insights that might make you even more con um, more confident about using the decimal process. You should also practice a lot. So I've got one video, it's linked in the description, that gives you three practice problems right here using the same style that we just did with the three samples here, but you can pause, answer for yourself, and then I'll show you how to find the answer. Additionally, there's a video linked in the description that the video itself is about all your subnetting practice options. So if you haven't seen that yet, look at that if you want more and more practice to get good at these. In particular, the subnetting practice questions kit has like 200 questions of the ilk that we just talked about. Then for your other two options here, let me give you a few words. The volume one official cert guide, chapter 14 has six additional practice questions, appendix F, has 25 more. So use those. When to use them? Well, they have explanations for how to find the answers. In particular, Appendix F does. So while you're still learning the process, this is the resource you want to use. And then once you get good at the process, you can use four sets of five problems over at the blog because those show you a problem and show you the answers, but they don't show you how to use this process to find them, all right? So use them when you're perfecting your skills and you've got the idea down and you're just, say, getting faster and wanting more and more practice. So I would say even time yourself for each set of five questions in each blog post, but maybe use one a week because it's good to not do it all at one time. So how fast should you need to go to be ready for a CCNA? The answer is if it's an easy mask, then about 10 seconds. And if it's a difficult mask, about 30 seconds. And you might think, oh my goodness, I can't do that. Yes, you can. The math is easy. It's the process that gets in the way a little bit because you have to practice it because there are enough steps to where you forget different things. So practice it, you can get there. But one of the things that happens sometimes is that people get to where they can do it in like 60 seconds and they're hung up on this counting to the magic multiples like particularly when the magic number is 8, 16, or 32. So if you start at 0 and go 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, and that's your speed, and you get up to 104, 112, 120, and, you're, and that's how quickly you're counting, and the number you need to get to is in the 200s, that can take up a lot of your time in this process. So here's how you deal with that. I want you to memorize the multiples of 32 starting at 0, 0, 32, 64, 96, etc. Now it turns out the magic numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16 are also, these are also multiples of those numbers. So what you do is count by this number. In fact, I would say before your timer starts on exam day, write this list down somewhere on your laminated page so you can refer to it. And say you're counting by eights and you need to get up to a number that's like 200 and something. You go 0, 32, 64, 96, blah, blah, get to 192 and then start counting by eights. All right. It just speeds you up in the counting process. Thanks for listening to the explanation of how to find these four key facts with just decimal math. Please subscribe and click the bell. Give me a like and practice. This is something you really do need to know well for CCNA. Hope it goes well for you. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are and what's going well and what you're struggling with. Have a good one. We'll see you.